Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. In this video we'll be looking at adding textures to our images, but if you already have a handle on adding textures, stick around because first we'll be looking at a great Adobe extension from Russell Brown, and this will automate the whole process. In Photoshop the first thing we need to do is open Adobe Exchange. This can be found in the Window, Extension, Adobe Exchange. Once the window is opened, we just need to type Textures into the search bar, and there's the one we want, Adobe Paper Textures by Russell Brown. Click Free, and the download will begin automatically. Once it's downloaded, it'll start installing, and you'll be asked to accept the terms and conditions. Once you've read that, and clicked Accept, the installation will continue. Depending on your computer and your system setup, you may be asked first to accept an install from an unverified source, and then to give administrator permissions. That's it, all done. It just remains to close Photoshop and relaunch. Once relaunched, go to Window, Extensions, and Paper Textures, and there they are, all ready for us to use. So you join me back here in real time. The last little segment was kind of time shifted around to make it a bit quicker, but we're back in real time. If you'd like to join me in this tutorial, you can download the JPEG version of this. It's called orangutangs.jpg. It's available from this post at tipsquirrel.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, then there'll be a link underneath this video to the post. Okay. Let's see how we can use our textures to improve this picture. I'm going to go over to the original, and the first thing I'm going to do, well, control zero to bring it full on screen, and then I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm going to call this one healing, healing, and, and what I'm going to do then is grab the spot healing brush tool, make sure it's sample all layers, content aware, and I can just go along and clean this wall up a bit. And because I'm sampling all layers, it's going to sample the layer below, which is the original of course, but actually put it onto its own layer, which means it's completely non-destructive, which is always good in Photoshop. Okay, once you've got the main bit of the wall done, then what we need to do is go and find these other little ratty bits, including down here by the bench. So this time I'm going to press Alt, uh, excuse me, I'm going to press S on the keyboard, and then Alt to mark a spot. So Alt and then click, and I'm using the top of the bench as a reference point, so that then I can come and use the top of the bench again, and then if I go straight up, I know I'm getting the right kind of shadowing behind the bench. Good. Then there's some more up here by the lettering, and again I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. Alt and click, and just go around, Alt and click, and the reason why I'm using the clone stamp tool is that it's a bit more convenient for this particular area because it's not going to try and grab the letters. The uh, content aware will have a look on the immediate area, which of course includes the letters as well. Okay, let's see what we can do there. Good. And just a little bit more. I am rushing a little bit because I don't want to bore you any more than is necessary. Good. Okay, we're done. Let's have a look at the image. Control zero. And that's looking much better. There's a little bit there which will annoy me if I don't get it. Good. Okay, there we are. Very nice. Yep, that looks good. Okay, let's add a texture. So I'm going to use our new extension. Click on that and then go find the texture that I want. In fact, I think it's the one that's already highlighted. Uh, in fact, this is already highlighted from the time that I've done it before. So I'm just going to uh, click on this arrow and click reset and you'll notice that all the red outlines disappear. Okay, I'm going to go and collect this one. So I collect, click on this one. You notice that it's set to overlay. Now I can change that as much as I like. If these aren't to your taste, you can always load more. If you've got some textures on your hard drive, you can always go and load more. And all you have to do then is load the texture folder and follow it through. And you can find the folder with your textures in, depending on what you want to do. For this, I'm quite happy with the textures that came with it. So I'm going to use this one here, and all I'm going to do now is click it, and it will add that texture on its own layer, 
are the blend mode of overlay and add a mask as well and you notice that red box going around it so it keeps track of which ones it's added so if you do have to reset it knows which ones to take away as well very very handy indeed okay so we've already changed this quite immensely just with that one texture so if i take off the visibility of that one it changes it it changes the mood of this completely good okay it's not quite the spotlight that i wanted right in the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a healing layer and turn off the visibility of our new texture create a new layer and then fill that with 50 percent gray shift and backspace will bring up our fill dialog box you notice i've got 50 percent gray already there if you click on the downward pointing arrow you may have it set to content aware or one of the others 50 percent gray and click ok and it fills it with 50 percent gray change the blend mode from normal to soft light and it makes no difference whatsoever until you add blacks and whites now whites will lighten it and blacks will darken it so with that in mind if i go and get our gradient tool radial gradient i've actually got this in reverse so as i can keep my black as my foreground color white as my background color and then going from the top of the the bench there and just drag it out a little way i can then add a radial gradient and look at that if i put the texture back on because that is on overlay we get this lovely effect here so we've already gone from this to this very very simply indeed okay that's cool now the problem is here is that our orangutans didn't look like it was there in the first place i can assure you it is part of the scene it was really there but it doesn't look like it in the original and it really doesn't look like it now and the reason for that is it needs a shadow i think so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my channels and i'm going to have a look through each of the channels to see which one the word orangutans sticks out the most Let's see blue i think so right click on that and duplicate the channel blue copy is fine let's click ok and now we're on the blue copy that's the one that's visible so control and l will bring up levels now this is destructive levels but that's okay we're using an alpha channel we're not going to destroy the layer at all if i bring this slider in here the black slider and bring it in you can see that we've se separated the word orangutans from the rest of the image if i click ok that's a little bit left that's okay if i get my polygonal lasso tool and just click my way around and sure enough I can then go alt and backspace fill that with black control d to deselect and now i've just got orangutans i'm going to select my orangutans and just by pressing control and then clicking on the layer icon here there we go let's select the rgb again to bring back the image go back to our layers now i want to go onto my paper texture i think here do i yeah let's go one below actually let's go to that healing and let's create it there i'm just thinking ahead of myself okay and then new layer and then let's control and backspace to fill that selection with white it doesn't look like much has changed control d to deselect it doesn't look like much has changed because they were white anyway um, all we've done is added white but there'll be a reason for that in just a second okay let's uh, call that lettering Lettering. okay cool hit enter and then we'll double click on that and what we can do here is we can then add our drop shadow just to make it look a bit more realistic we don't want the global light that's going downwards we actually want it to go upwards so let's turn that almost all the way around and now our shadow is up and to the left a little bit which is where the light source is coming from that looks a lot better but it's still not great so what i'm going to do is add a gradient overlay hence we filled it with white and you can see that it's picking out the colors quite nicely let's change this from look well if it wasn't if it wasn't on linear we would change it to linear and uh, let's turn this around and try and match the angle of the light as well and it's really kind of use the downward pointing arrow just to swing it around a little bit 
there we go that's cool and i'm going to bring down the opacity of that just a little bit just so it kind of blends in a little bit okay good let's press ok all right now finally let's add a border to this so i'm going to turn off these layers ding 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 okay good um in fact i could have put them into the smart object now can't i so let's turn them back on again and let's put them into a smart object and keep it all nice and neat so click on the top layer click on the bottom layer and then right click convert to smart object there we go that's made it a bit easier i'm going to create a new layer and bring that underneath just so photoshop knows where i'm working it helps to uh, make this uncomplicated for the texture um, extension okay let's go on to our texture extension and let's pull up one of these um let's go for a nice kind of slaty kind of thing there we go and it's going to put it in overlay now i didn't change it but i do want to change that to normal so let's click on that layer and change it to normal okay let's turn off the visibility of my smart object just so i can see what i'm doing okay good um let's add one more of those so let's add another texture let's go for this one here perhaps dawn grunge and this time i'm happy for this to be in overlay and you can see we've added a little bit of a texture to that let's try a couple of different ones maybe a linear burn good um a darker color is doesn't really work very well hard mix yuck okay let's go back to my first uh, my first guess linear burn okay turn back on the smart object and then go control and t to transform it shift and alt shift constrain alt to transform from the center we can bring that in to the middle and press enter to accept and now on the paper texture i can the smart object i can double click and then just add a very quick stroke don't want white so let's click on the white and then go pick a color from down maybe on the bench somewhere one of these colors okay that's nice okay and then i'm going to reduce that to about three pixels could be a bit darker i think that couldn't it so let's again choose a different color and go and pick one of these darker ones that's better that's nicer okay now i've got free reign to change anything i like on this um especially the border i don't think i've quite nailed the border but we're getting there we're definitely getting there so we've used three textures really very very simply and there we are there's our finished item i'm eric Reno. thank you very much for joining me don't forget to check into tipschool.com to find out who's posting when and to check out all their great tips and techniques. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye for now.